say hello to one and all. Uh, and welcome to the final night of this week's devotion series. I'm so excited. Tonight, I'm going to get to look a little bit foolish, but also demonstrate how God can use our flaws to bring about the message that he intends for people to hear. So, um, the goal for me, for these devotions, since they're every other week, has been to write the following Mondays on Monday, and Tuesdays on Tuesday, etc., etc., uh, in the case of this week, last week, I wrote Mondays on Monday. I wrote half of Tuesdays on Tuesday, and that's about as far as that got. So, I've finished up this week's devotions a little bit behind, to say the least, the absolute least. However, it would seem that God stepped into what I would guilt myself over, namely poor planning, and said, hey, this thing right here that burdens you with guilt and shame, yeah, I'm going to need this because I want to redeem it. Uh, and he did that this morning by teaching me about two people, again, this morning, in my Bible reading that made me think, now who were they again? Well, to answer my own question, they were Eldad and Medad. It's just the best names. Eldad and Medad are going to take us all the way back to the book of numbers. Yay, numbers! Nobody ever gets excited to read in numbers, except for us tonight. I don't care where you are, but I want you to yell name, yay numbers with me on the count of three. One, two, three. Yay numbers! Thank you. Anyway, Eldad and Medad are going to show up in Numbers chapter 11, verse 26. To kind of set the stage for you, all the people of Israel were complaining about the manna. Not a big shock for us. Moses goes to God and is like, what have I done to deserve this? God commands Moses to bring some leaders together so that they can share in Moses' blessings and in his duties. Meanwhile, on the edge of town, the Bible tells us in verse 26, Now two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad. And the Spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent. And so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the assistant of Moses from his youth, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put his spirit on them. And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. So Moses has gathered all the chosen leaders of the tribes at the tent of meeting. But these two little guys show up in the middle of camp. They're not at the tent. And they start prophesying. Now, we are kind of trained in the church and somewhat in general to equate the term prophecy with an idea of foretelling the future. However... I've learned recently that most scholars would agree that prophecy really is almost more of a synonym for preaching. Maybe there's a lot of preaching that includes foretelling the future, but prophets are simply people who speak God's words. So Eldad and Medad were preaching in the camp to the people. Well, this upset some young man and also Joshua. However, Moses was glad to see it and wished more people would be about God's business. What we see in the story of Eldad and Medad are two men who did not get called to be chiefs of their tribes, who didn't mean much on the political side of things, but who first and foremost the Spirit rested on. Did you catch that up there in verse 26? The Spirit rested on them. So... Neat! You don't have to be the Moses or any of the chosen dignitaries of your day for the Spirit to rest on you. Ooh, 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 hear it again. Just because no one else sees you as being high and lofty doesn't mean the Spirit isn't going to rest on you. And this was the first testament before the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. So if the Spirit wasn't about to be restrained to the important people in the First Testament, how much more does he rest on everyone now? G. 
Jesus himself tells us in John 14, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. We are all too happy in our society to jump ahead, to jump head first into the comparison game. Well, you have these six things and I only have four. Or you've got this spiritual gift and all I've got is this little one over here. And in the church, this translates to a problem I recently heard someone describe as the I'm just as. I'm just some dude. I'm just a mom. I'm just a teenager. The I'm just as get us into a lot of trouble and knock us out of a lot of opportunities. Eldad and me dad are here today to teach us that the I'm just as don't count for much and they don't need to stop us. All the chiefs and leaders of the tribes of Israel were with Moses at the tent of meeting. And if Eldad and Medad had been checking their Facebook statuses, they might have ended up staying inside, consigning themselves to the fact that I'm just a regular Israelite. There's nothing special about me. Now, maybe you aren't the next Billy Graham. Maybe you aren't going to lead a worldwide revival where 3.7 billion people come to a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. But you are a child of God. You are someone who has a ministry by the very existence of your life. Jesus said to us so many times in scripture that it isn't about numbers. In Luke 15, 7, he says, Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. The joy of heaven is over individuals. And since the joy of heaven is over individuals, we can be sure that individuals are never seen as I'm just as. Now, the other thing we need to note here is the response of the young man and the response of Joshua. I can say with full certainty that God has a ministry through your life. The fact that you have a relationship with Jesus and the fact that you are breathing means you have a ministry for God through the Holy Spirit. Because I can know that for sure, I can know something else for sure. Somebody is going to be trying to stop you. Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. The Spirit of God is all over them, and that's what that leads to. Meanwhile, some young fellow is absolutely losing his mind because Eldad and Medad are preaching, and they're just regular people. The only thing that can be more crippling than the I'm just as is the you're just as. And if you should be in doubt that they are ever going to come, look to Jesus for your example. In Matthew chapter 16, Jesus is telling his friends what's going to happen to him, that to fulfill prophecies, he must die and rise again. In verse 22, poor Peter's big fat mouth gets him in trouble again. The Bible says that Peter, Peter took him aside and began to rebuke Jesus, saying, far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. If you're not worried about the your justice, remember that Jesus called him. Okay, Peter took him aside. I can't speak tonight, you guys. Peter took him aside and said, you aren't going to die. You're just our savior and rightful king. If it came for Jesus, it's going to come for you too. Your very life is an active ministry for the Lord. You cannot hide behind the I'm just as and escape the fact. You can avoid your effectiveness and your responsibility, but you can't escape the fact that you have effectiveness and responsibility. You also shouldn't be burdened by the your just as. It does not matter what other people speak over your life. What matters is what God has spoken over your life. 
And God has said that he has plans to give you a hope and a future. With that hope and that future comes a relationship with Jesus that leads to the Holy Spirit living in you, which leads to your daily living ministry. And that is the lesson we are called to learn from Eldad and Medad. Now, who were they again? Before we leave this devotion series, there's one last statement that needs to be stated. Um, we have discussed people in our Bible that we have different levels of familiarity with this week. We've talked about Shifra and Pua and Abishag and Legion and Jairus and now Eldad and Medad. And we have asked the question, now who were they again? But after this conversation about your ministry and about my ministry and how important we are in the plot of God's narrative of history, there's something you should know. The God of the universe, the one who designed you for your ministry in your day, just as he designed each of the people we've talked about this week, that God, he has redeemed you. Not only that, but he has called you his, and he has called you by name, according to Isaiah 43, verse 1. No matter what the I'm just as and the you're just as say, God knows you, and he calls you his. Know for sure tonight that he never looks at you and wonders. Now, who is that again? No, he always and forever speaks over you. Now that is my child with whom I am well pleased. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the people in your word. We thank you for using people who are so much less than perfect. We thank you for using the people that nobody else notices, the people who we tend to miss when reading your word. And God, we thank you for the opportunity to learn from and about a host of people who don't get talked about a lot this week. We thank you for Shifra and Pua and their dedication to you. God, we thank you for Abishag and her ministry to her king. We thank you for Legion and the truth that we are not owned by our demons. God, we thank you for Jairus and his faith that defies logic. And God, we thank you for Eldad and Medad. And the knowledge that your spirit doesn't just rest on the high and mighty. It rests on and in us all. Go with us as we move forward from this study. Remind us that we are so much more than we acknowledge. Open our eyes to the person you have created, not the person the world sees. And God, I pray everyone under the sound of my voice begins to recognize themselves as individuals fully known and fully loved by the God who created every atom that has ever existed. You are infinitely more than we can understand, yet personal enough to invade our hearts and take up residence. You are a good, great God, and you are huge and able. Thank you. And it is in the name of the God who called himself Aa, I am. It is in the name of the God, I am, who defines his beloved people as chosen and cherished. It is in the name of the God who knows who I am that we pray all these things. Amen.